Hello and welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy. This is the lecture for the month of September 2011 and it's called the Quick Quad Walk. Now this is a workflow lecture. This is going to give you a step-by-step -step process for creating quick quadruped walks that you can use that are basically modular and easily editable for all your animation needs. This only shows you the steps that you need to use in order to make a quad walk that is usable. It doesn't give you a perfect quad walk for every animal. To do that, you need to research the animal, you need to know its footfall pattern, you need to know its weight, you need to know what it's doing, if it's just a vanilla walk or if it's actually prowling, stalking, uh, sneaking away, um, doing whatever. And for that, you need to be very, 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 you know, diligent in your research. So this is basically the how to not get caught up in the minutia of a quadruped rig while you're trying to make animation. So if you're really interested in animals and creatures, then the Animals and Creatures Masterclass at Animation Mentor is right for you. It really is. It's super hard. It's very difficult. I would not take it lightly, uh, but I would recommend it. I would highly recommend it. You will, if you will, at the end of it, you will have a, a newfound understanding for the complexity of animal movement that uh, you really can't get anywhere else. It's really fantastic. Again, though, this is a workflow. So this does this does not replace at all the Animals and Creatures uh, Masterclass, but this is definitely something that you should have going into it, okay? Just a little story, when I was hired at r &H, um, I was uh, given an offer at SIGGRAPH, and I was starting in, so it was like beginning of August, and I started in September. So there was about a month in there where I had, you know, to practice and, 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 and get up to speed. Well, don't tell anybody, but I had never done any quadruped um, animation really. I had done some insects, but they were basically insects that had been like stood up and even though they had six arms, they were basically bipeds with two legs and four arms, kind of like just all gesturing at the same time. <clears throat> so. I was freaking out because I was told that I was going to be working on Scooby-Doo and Garfield. So a cat and a dog and I'd never done any of this. So I was freaking out. I was doing as much work as I possibly could <clears throat> and I noticed some things. <clears throat> I came up with a workflow and that workflow severely changed. But that was the first thing I did. I came up with a workflow and I tried to, I put it to the test in production and it broke and I put it back together and, and found out how, how uh, I do things. So just as you need a workflow to, in order to uh, be able to have the comfort to fully explore the animal that you are trying to animate and do that research and be diligent and actually be able to execute all of these observations that you're making about the character. <clears throat> Um, you know, I, I wish I had this workflow before I started at the uh, RNH and, and, and you will, if, if you're considering Animals and Creatures, you definitely should take the Animals and Creatures Masterclass. Um, but this is something that will help you. It, it'll get you in a place where you're, you're not freaking out once you start, okay? So we're going to jump right into it. We're going to be using the Nico rig. Nico is available on creativecrash.com. You just need a free login and um, search for Nico, N-I-C-O. It's a quadruped rig with a really nice face uh, control system. And it has all the things that I need in order to do a correct walk cycle as well. And some of those things are all of the IK movers in world space in the same world space or the same object space. So they all move the same distance when you move them in Z. Uh, FKIK spine, FKIK tail, head isolation, um, little things like that. And, and, and they make a big difference in the end. So uh, go ahead and download Nico and I'll wait. Okay, let's get started. So reference your rig in, 
and always reference your regs in. You always want to make sure that you can make quick changes if there's ever a rig update. Okay, and here is Nico. We're going to do a little bit of rig testing first. First thing we want to make sure is that all of the controls indeed are in the same object space. Our main controllers, which with a quadruped, is the IK world mover, basically the thing that moves the entire body. Okay, and then the four legs. Okay, so I'm just going to drag this forward and observe the value right here, 194.747. All right, and then I'm just going to check by selecting all of these controllers. And I see that they're all 194.747, which means that this character was created correctly with all of the IK controls in world space or in, in the same object space. I'm not sure if there's any scales above. No, it looks, like, it looks like that is world space. So this is a very big rig as well. And why that's nice is you can see this little grid down here. You know, that's, this is the size that the grid comes in when you open Maya, like right here. So this is a very big rig, and that's nice. That's a good thing. Why? Because when you're coming up with your stride length, it's nice if it, if it is an integer value. If you have a character that's like one unit tall, your stride length might be like 0.172, which is a real pain in the butt when you're trying to do the math on that. If you don't know what stride length is, I've talked at length about it in many video mails in the past. If you search back in the resources uh, in the store, you'll see uh, video mails that talk about cycles, video mails that talk about um, um, Pretty much the video mails are the ones that talk about cycles, but there's also a lecture how to correctly test a rig. I talk a little bit about stride length and how to find the right stride length uh, and how, how it's important that all the controls are in the same object space. So if you don't know what I'm talking about with stride length, go see, search out those resources that, um, that I have made already and talked about it. But you'll, you'll get a uh, crash course when we're doing uh, the Nico walk cycle as well. Okay. So let's do just a little bit more rig testing. One thing uh, that I need to make sure is the pole vectors. Are they moving with the legs or are they uh, basically on their own? And it looks like it's halfway constrained from the leg and the, the cog. You see this? OK, so if I grab both the leg and the cog, Okay, look, it stays, it stays perfectly you know, in line with that elbow. Okay, good. So that's fine. We um, can work with that because the cog and the feet will be moving together. They'll actually be moving the exact same distance, and that's what stride length is. Let's just test a few more things. These hips, does it affect the spine? It really affects the spine shape, but not the direction. Looks like we have an IK shape control in the middle there. Also, the tail is fully isolated. So those FK controls on the tail are not affected by the uh, movement that I'm putting on the hips right now. Okay, let's also test the front. And the head is isolated as well. But as you can see, it's looking at this look at control right here. So let's make sure, okay, so the look at control doesn't animate with the, um, with the master. And let's just see if we can find... All right, does not look like there's any way to stick this to the head. So we'll have to animate the aim, the eye aim control. Okay, that's not a big deal. All right. So the first thing we're going to do always is find the stride length. The stride length is the distance that a character travels in one cycle. So if it's a quad, it is the distance it travels in four steps, each one of its feet stepping once. <clears throat> if it's a biped, it's every two steps is one stride. All right? It's not the distance that one foot travels because they all travel the same distance. And this is one of the things that's a little bit weird sometimes for people who are new to this concept. But all of the feet and the cog 
all travel the exact same distance in one, one uh, stride, one cycle. <clears throat> and it's a little weird to think about because when you start a cycle, you have to start it somewhere in the middle, right? So that it can loop back to that point. So with a pose where the character is basically in the middle, one foot is like really far forward. So doesn't that one move less or no? no they all move the exact same distance. So you'll see that here in a second. So to find the stride length, first thing you need to do is find a pose that is your, your starting pose. And I like my starting pose to be the back right foot just planted. Um, and the front right foot is about to lift. I don't know why, but that is just, it, you know what it is? It's my workflow. So th there you go. That's, that's how it, it, it came about. I, I've done this enough that I know when I'm starting a quad, that's just what I do. Okay. So um, I'll open up the pose here for you. <clears throat> and just so you know, when I was doing this, this entire the, the start to finish is going to be longer in this video. But the entire quick quad walk that you see here was done in 45 minutes. So in 45 minutes, I'm, I'm giving you the workflow for in, in 45 minutes to have exactly, uh, basically, what you need to get your character um, cycling. And at least have enough like input points where you can change it, modify it, add to it, subtract from it to make it the, 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 the animal that you're actually working with. Okay? So the most common walk is actually uh, the lateral walk, which is um, both feet on one side step before the other side goes. So, and it goes back front. So we're going back right, front right, back left, front left, back right, front right, back left, front left, just over and over, okay? Um, so now we're going to find the str stride length. So I put my character in a pose that I feel like is a comfortable pose for a walk, okay? Here he is. And I've also taken the feet and I've brought them in just a little bit. You can see he's walking a little bit more on a line. All right, here's the translate X. Here's it back at zero. So I brought it in about 15 units, okay? We don't care right now about what this looks like or where this is because we can always grab all the curves and like move him a little bit more centered over this grid point the, the, that, that kind of adjustment is very simple. In fact, I'll do one for you at the end, um, if I can remember, um, when we're done to, to, to show you that, okay? So, um, we have our pose right here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to experiment, we're going to put some values in and start the, finding the stride length, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to grab all four of these controls, set a key on frame one, and set a key on frame 24, okay? And then we're going to, let's, uh, let's delete these, okay? Then we're going to basically add a certain value to all the translate Zs. In your graph editor, start getting familiar with this concept. Selecting a channel like Translate Z and then going to Show All. And then, or sorry, not Show All, the Show Selected Types. I'm, I'm so used to going back and forth between this that I actually narrated going back from this even though I was thinking about going into it. That's how, that's how often I do this. I just, like, I, I just said the next step even though I'm on the first step. So Show Selected Types. And then you'll see that your translate Zs are the only channel that is shown in the graph editor right now. Shift select all of them and then there they are. If you grab the end, you can do the end key, sorry, you can do math transforms in the, in the graph editor. 
also get very familiar with this concept. This is actually all in How to Cheat in Maya 2012 as well. Um, there, I have an entire uh, chapter basically on stride length. Or sorry, not chapter, basically section, sorry, on stride length. It's in the cycles section of How to Cheat in Maya 2012. You should check it out. Anyway, so you can do math operations. Multiply is um, asterisk, and then equals means you're going to multiply all of the keys by the following value, like 50, right? So if I hit enter, it'll multiply all these values by 50. And let me just show you what that did. So you see that? It like multiplied them out, all right? If I subtract, you go minus equals. And then let's do 100. And then, as you can see, all of these values were dragged down to 100 uh, units less than it was. All right. And you can see right here, this key was on a, almost frame 100, or not frame, but a value of 100. And then, boom, down here, it's almost at zero. So I'm going to undo that as well. We want to add, because we're adding the stride length. Okay. So I'm going to um, do this to try to find the stride length. Okay. If I look at this foot, all right, and I see that it's at a z of 100, and then I bring it back to where it's almost totally stretched out, let's see where it starts really stretching out. It's about negative 60. That is the quickest way to find the stride length, okay? So it's basically when this foot is stepping forward, this is as far forward as it can go because otherwise it'll hit this foot. So it's like 105, 106, and this one is like negative 55, negative, negative 60 is where it really starts stretching out. And I know that even though this is a horribly ugly pose, I'm going to be doing some toe rolls, so we'll get a little bit of room back in that leg. So basically, in a comfortable walk where there's no like hopping and there's no you know, lifting the leg too much off the ground, I know that I can get away with about 160 units. So that's what we're going to multiply everything by. All right? And we're going to do it by the book, or by the numbers, I should say so that we're sure that we're not eyeballing it. So the cool thing is, is that when you use math transforms in the graph editor, you know that it's, it, it is exact. If you're eyeballing it in the panel, then it's never going to be exact. So we've just decided that our stride length is 160. So we're going to do plus equals 160. And for now, let's actually make all these tangents linear, okay? So now we have our stride, basically. Another thing we want to do is select the world controller and also set uh, keys on the, on the world controller. On the world controller, we want it to actually move opposite the body, opposite the, the legs of Nico. So it looks like he's actually standing in place and he's on a treadmill. If we have an integer stride length, it's very easy. We're going to go minus equals 160. And we're also going to select that, uh, those tangents and make them linear. All right. Now, if we play this back, it actually only looks like the uh, master controller is moving backwards. Oh, and the eye aim. Let's fix that. Let's grab the eye aim. Let's put it out way ahead. OK. Let's set a key, set a key. And then plus equals 160. Make that linear. In fact, we can do a little bit of an adjustment. If we don't like where this is, okay, we can actually delete the channels of x and y, lift it up just a little bit, and we can move the entire curve so that it stays a little bit more ahead of Nico. So his eyes aren't crossed, right? Because if it's down here, then his eyes are. Oh, actually, there's a convergence. That's actually kind of cool. There's a convergence channel to make sure that his eyes don't cross. They actually go wall-eyed when he gets too close. But at any rate, you're also going to have to get used to grabbing entire curves and making adjustments like this. Okay? 
All right. So your beginning comfortable pose has now been turned into basically one stride of the entire character. Well, that's not really how these cycles work. I mean, is it? it they actually have to, to, to move. So what did we say? We said that the back right foot just planted. So that means if it's a 24 frame cycle and there's four steps, each step takes six frames. So let's hold this for 18 frames so that basically, you see, it, it goes backwards and then it takes a step, right? It looks like it's planted. This foot is the first foot to step. So I'm going to copy the pose on frame 24 to frame 6, right? Because it, it's the first one to step. Okay? You see that? <clears throat> okay. On a quad walk, we want, also kind of want to make sure that there's a little bit of overlap with the, the feet. So we can actually cheat and make this like frame eight there. And that actually gives us a little bit better of a range. All right, and we'll fix this range just a little bit with the, um, with the master controller as well. Okay, the position of the master controller will, will alter it and whatever, okay? On frame six, this foot is gonna start going. So we're holding until frame six, and then we're moving up until frame, let's make it 14, right? Okay, and then on frame 12, basically, this foot is still holding, and then it moves to um, basically 18, but we can make it 20. And then we're going to adjust this foot, the, the back right foot, um, in a sec. But now you can see that at least the um, football pattern is, is starting to um, work. But let me see what's going on here. This one to 12, 12 to, oh wait, this one's wrong. My bad. There we go, okay. So now we have right, right, left, left. Right, right, left, left. So now we have our footfall pattern. And it's looking like he's getting a little bit stretched out in front. So what we're gonna do is he's got nice, long, like kangaroo-esque legs. So what we're gonna do is we're going to um, use the graph editor, go back to show all, and then adjust some curves, okay? Let's bring them down a little bit. All right, just a little bit. Let's also adjust this curve so that he's just a little bit more forward on his feet. There we go. Now we're not having too bad of, of, of stretching. Okay. Um, and for some reason, uh, this foot seems like it's st stretching a lot further back than, uh, than this one. So we're going to move this guy's Translate Z, and let's actually do it on a pose where he's supposed to be almost touching this guy, right? There we go. Now it actually looks like the feet are actually taking the same uh, stride, okay? And because our stride length was typed in and done as math in the graph editor, and our Worldcon has basically a opposite, a perfectly mathematically opposite. He's treadmilling perfectly in place, right? So the first thing you do is find the stride length, type it in, use math, use the graph editor, or if you have, I mean, if you wanted to start your character like on zero, you could actually, you can actually figure out how to do the stride length um, with integer values on him. So I'll show you how to do that. So right now he's on, this foot is on 29.899. All right, that's pretty easy. Um, we can just make that 30, okay? So now it's 30. 
Let's also make this 30, and then it, what's 30 plus 160 is 190. Oops. So there we go. Now I typed in in the graph, not graphic, sorry, in the panel. And so now I know, hey, well, at least his, his, um, his uh, stride is, uh, I, you know, I could do it in panel, but it's also mathematically correct, right? So you can, do it, you can do it both ways. I just like, you, you're never going to have, you, you, you're not guaranteed to have a character who's as big as Nico. As you can see right here, it's really, really nice that he's so big because going from 29.89 to 30 was no big deal at all. And I can do the math in my head on, on you know, 30 plus 160, right? So, you know, you can't depend on that. You might not have a character that is this big at, at all times. That's why it's good to get fast and for your workflow to be to do it in the graph editor because you can just go boom, 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 and you're done. You'll also find that as you're adding more animation to controllers that have a world, tr a world uh, translate Z that you're dealing with, like the foot, like when you're doing rotate on the foot, that it's, you really want the rotation to be exactly the same. You want that key to be perfect. So your middle mouse dragging from one to frame 24 and hitting set key, and then look what that does. That copied all the other channels, but the Translate Z, it just put back, oh no, it put it back to uh, you know, the frame one. So rather than having to retype it in or select all the channels besides Translate Z and only hitting set key on selected channels, what a pain in the butt. It's much better to just get good at going to the graph editor, selecting it just really quickly, plus equals 160, enter, you're done, all right? And I know it looks screwed up right now, but that's because the frame hasn't actually updated. If I go back one frame and then forward, it's actually fixed, right? And it's back to normal, right? Who wants to go and like, you know, set key on selected channels and whatever? It's so much easier to just get good at selecting it, plus equals 160, enter, done, right? You're gonna be doing that all the time. So just get good at it, okay? Next thing I want to do is I want to, I want to be absolutely certain that any little adjustments I do with the feet or with the, the cog uh, are not going to mess up the pole vectors. So I'm just going to, I call it flying them a little bit. There's no animation on them. I'm just pulling them just slightly out of the um, legs. Actually, you don't want to do it with these, with the knee pole vectors because it actually affects the, um, the uh, position of the knee. And Nico is awesome because the parallel rule um, in his legs are almost perfectly um, uh, taken care of. It's a little bit close right here. This should probably be like that so that the femur and the ankle are parallel. But you learn all about that stuff in, in uh, Animation Mentor. And remember, this is the workflow. This is the step-by-step -step process so that you can get your, your, your quad cycling and going and not have to worry about um, the, the minutia of a quad rig in, uh, when you're trying to put character or when you're trying to put a, a really specific animal motion like stalking or something into a character, okay? Um, I've already brought my feet in line a little bit, but you want to check this. You want to make sure that this is kind of, you know, how much on a line you want the, the, the feet walking. And this looks pretty good to me. Um, I don't want it to be super feline, like, like uh, cats walk really in a, a line. Dogs, they walk in line, but not as much, okay? Um, and I feel like this guy is kind of like halfway between a cat and a dog. Don't really know what he is. He's really cool though. The really dope rig. It's got all these neat facial controls as well. You know, like little smiles, little like nostril flares. It's cool. Um, okay. So, and we also have our treadmill moving. So those are the first couple steps. Find your stride length. Fly your pole vectors just a little bit um, and your eye controller cycle it in front of the character, bring the feet in line, make sure your treadmill, your, your treadmilling, your control just a little bit. Then next thing I like to do is 
set a key, I have only curves selectable right now, so I know I'm not selecting any joints or anything like that. I like to set a key on frame one and a key on frame 24 on all controls. And uh, then I like to go to curves and then set my pre-infinity to cycle and my post-infinity to cycle. And then go back, select my main IK world movers one more time, and then go pre-infinity, sorry, before that, on translate Z and just translate Z, make my pre-infinity cycle with offset and my post infinity cycle with the offset. Now you turn on infinity on, on your view menu in the graph editor and it should look like this. It should look like if you zoom out, it should be your, your uh, treadmill, basically your world controller, perfectly opposite all of your curves of your uh, main controller. And there should be no splitting up, basically, you know, as much as you zoom out, it should always be a line, right? They, they shouldn't spread out and like, you know, go up here and this, this one goes down there because they are all in the exact same um, world space. This is a, a, a perfectly correct uh, rig. Um, right now, it might be a good time to actually flat tangents of, of the feet, um, but not the... Not this one, not the, uh, not the cog. I want that one to be linear for now, okay? So now we have basically the character set up. And by set up, I mean all the controls. If I set a key, um, if I start doing the rotation on him, uh, on you know, this, this, this control right here, well then I know that it's, it's basically selecting, um, well, let me put it in a different way. It, w w even though I'm putting new, control, uh, new uh, values on this key, it's still going to be cycling um, in, in infinity. So let me show all again, and then let me like, rotate this. Now, as you can see, in infinity, it just made this adjustment. So I can do some animation right here, and then copy frame one to frame 24, and then I have this perfectly cycling. So once you set the um, infinity curve types, it's always baked into that curve. You're not actually setting it on the keys themselves, but you do need keys to set, them to, to set the infinity curve types. Actually, I'm not sure about that, but um, it's a good workflow to follow, okay? So all of my keys have been copied. You saw how easy it was to select a, uh, a control and say like, okay, well it needs to be in the position of, of frame 24 on frame eight. So I just middle mouse dragged and I, I set a key and it was that simple. You saw that. So it's really that simple to create your strides. Now it's time to start putting some of the other motion on the body. Uh, the first one I like to do is actually the rotate X in the um, body controller, the, the main cog. And this is a technique that I use over and over again in How to Cheat Maya. And basically the, the, the quick version of it is this, is if you know how long your cycle is and you know what motion you basically want on your cycle, then all you have to do is just create one cycle of that movement and then retime it to look good. So what I mean is I know that on each step I want a little bit of rotation, a little bit of bounce like this. So I'm just going to animate two steps, you know, two bounces basically, and then I'll figure out the timing when I'm done. So let's like do down, up on six, and I can even copy. I'm just gonna copy this to 12. I'm gonna copy six to 18. I'm gonna copy 12 to 24, okay? Now, I just um, screwed up the translate Z. This is why it's super important. I'm gonna select translate Z. I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna go plus equals 160, enter, and I'm done, all right? 
So here we go. Now we've got some rotate Z on the body, <clears throat> but instead of trying to figure out and into it, like how is this possible to, all right, so if it, he's just stepped, then he's starting to fall. All right, so he needs to be in the middle of, okay, so that on frame one, I'm gonna animate it right here. No, 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 don't worry about what it's supposed to be on that frame, right? Just, I'm gonna flat this, and you can see that it's cycling perfectly, right? Just animate it and then retime it. So here we go, let me just like look right here. He, it should probably be a little bit later, see, because what's happening is he's falling down even before he steps on that foot. So I think like two frames, one, two. Actually, that was too much, like one frame. Okay, cool. And now let's do a little bit of, um, a little bit of up and down. Same thing, so I'm gonna select the translate Y channel, I'm gonna delete it, okay? Why? Because I want to be, make sure that I'm only keying one cycle of the, the translate Y. You'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm actually gonna set key one more time, key selected on translate Y, okay? And then, this is pretty cool, I'm gonna set key on translate Y one more time, and then in the graph editor, I have this this straight line, I'm gonna hold down I to insert and middle mouse click on six, 12, and 18. And then I'm just going to select these two and look, we have our up down, right? Super, super simple. Um, when you deleted the channel, it deleted the infinity curve type. So you have to have, it does look like you have to have infinity, or sorry, uh, keys set on a channel um, for it to be um, for it to actually be able to pick up a infinity curve type. So let's just see what this looks like right now. All right, that's a little bit too much up and down, I would say. So let me scale this just a little bit. All right, and it's a little, also a little bit too low overall. And what I want is for when his foot goes by, it's actually at its highest. So like right here, it's at its highest. So let me see right here. I can actually make that adjustment super simply by just, bam, there we go. Now it does look like I've actually put myself out of range for this leg um, to work. So let me check out the rotate X. And maybe I can just adjust the rotate X just a little bit to, to work. Okay. Okay, so this being my like overall, like my gross movement on the body and the, and the feet, we know that we can start putting things in that are a little bit more detailed in terms of like the, the range that we're going to end up with. So this looks like the right range pretty much, meaning we can start doing things like, like toe lifts and and actually getting the legs, the, the feet lifting up and um, placing. Um, so I'm gonna save this as blocking 1A. Um, I think that this is, I can't be sure, it's actually hard to remember. I think this is where I st stopped at blocking two. Let me just make sure. Um, now we're already 40 minutes into this lecture. Um, remember, I already had uh, the entire thing done in 45 minutes. So if you're not, um, you know, you're not listening to a lecture like this and you're not, you know, moving through uh, super slowly, then you can do this really quickly. All right, it does look like that that's where I, I stopped. Okay, so basically this is how you, you, you do this. Um, and as you, as you can see, it's very simple keys. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six keys. Um, per um, foot, but let me basically redo this one so you can see, okay? <clears throat> okay. 
So what you need to know first off is that this is the first frame basically where he's um, lifting the back right foot, okay? Meaning that the leg needs to be pretty much almost picked up. So I'm going to animate up this toe pivot to a value where I get a little bit of range back in my elbow, not too much, you know, because it needs to be a comfortable walk, but it needs to be, also needs to feel like, you know, he is um, walking with purpose. And uh, I'm going to set key right there. Then I'm going to see, because it, it does lift up, um, it looks like I did animate this um, lifting up already. This is just a translate Y value. So I'll show you. Very, very, very simple. Ideally, let me, I would break this tangent and actually have it fast in as much as I can, really slam in. What we want to make sure though is that that pivot is not screwing up um, anything like intersecting, intersecting the ground or the angle of the foot or anything. One frame ahead of the foot placement, um, I'd normally like to zero this out, okay? And I normally like, see how it, it places right here, I normally like it to be just a little bit bent backwards, so I'm going to put a rotate channel and just a little bit ahead, just a hair ahead of where it, it would be um, normally, okay? Then remember, you need to have the same value, if it's like toe pivot, same value on the first and last frame. So um, I'm going to middle mouse drag, set key. That put my toe pivot um, back there, but probably it should be uh, zero as it's, as it's coming back. And as you probably also remember, I need to set my pre and post infinity curve types on the toe pivot because I deleted that, okay? And also, Translate Z plus equals 160. And now I'm done. Okay. Now the toe um, lifts, off, lifts, lifts off nicely. Okay. Now, um, as you can see, there's actually some movement in the hips and shoulders. That's next. So after you've done your toe lifts, and you know, your, your nice floppy toes, okay? And they're lifting nicely in a line. Ideally, they actually should be coming a little bit out of line before they step back in line. So actually this lifted, uh, this like passing pose right here should probably be a little bit out and actually a little bit rotated like this, to be honest. Just, just a hair, you see that? It's very small. Um, but then the next thing is to put some motion on the hips and the chest. And this is how you do that. The exact same thing that we did on the rotation of the cog, we're gonna do on the hips and chest. Meaning we're gonna set a key on one, six, 12, 18, 24, copy one to 24 like that, and then um, adjust and read time as necessary. It just so happens that the motion that I wanted, which was a little bit of rotation in X, um, I got basically everything I wanted um, from looking, you know, just exactly on the on those keys. So it actually worked out really nicely. Um, but I'm going to redo it on the butt because you can see that it is actually offset a little bit. So let me just delete that, okay? I'm going to key X on one, I'm gonna key it on 24. I'm gonna go into the graph editor, I'm gonna delete these. I'm gonna insert on six, 12, and 18. I'm gonna grab these two, I'm gonna drag them down about negative 10 degrees, flat this, make my pre and post cycle. Make sure I'm viewing infinity, it looks good. And now I'm gonna watch it. All right, it doesn't look like it's doing it enough, that's for sure, that's the first thing. Oops. This is translate X, not rotate X. One more time. Six, 
12, 18. All right, now let's watch it. There we go. All right, so it looks to me like it needs to be offset about two frames. And it doesn't look like it's bending enough to me. There we go. Awesome. Then we can do the same thing, side to side motion. And what's nice about this, doing it this way, is instead of, see we're in world space right now, my, my, my uh, rotation gizmo is in world. If we go to local, then you can start doing some of that. But every once in a while, just because of the way the rig is set up, and this one as well, as you can see over here in the channel box, even though I'm on, I'm just rotating one channel, look, rotation is going on all three of the channels. X, Y, and Z. Why is that happening? I don't know, and I don't have time to figure it out. And on a, on a film, it's not my job to figure it out. So I'm just gonna go to rotate Z uh, channel, and then I'm going to insert on, again, 6, 12, 18, 24. And then I know that there's, there's got to be some sort of, you know, basically sine wave. But I also know that it's going to be, they're going to be opposite each other. So I'm going to make this one like negative 10. And then I'm going to make this one positive 10 by just typing it in. Now we have something that is uh, cycling back and forth. Let me just make sure I set my pre and post infinity curve types. All right, and now we have something a little bit crazy. And that's interesting, I just forgot. So you might have rotation, um, you might have rotation in um, like world controls on uh, every, every single step, but I just realized that this control is not like that because it really is only the the back hips so it really should only favor the hip that it is stepped on you see that really should only be left and right for each step on the on the on the back uh, on the hips you see that and actually i'm kind of getting everything i want when it, when it plants the the hips go up you see that Pretty cool, all right? So as you can see so far, just a little bit of a recap. We found the stride length, we flew the elbow and knee pole vectors and the icon, we brought the legs in line a little bit, we treadmilled the mover, um, and then to, and, uh, when we have the stride length, then it was very easy to just copy the keys when we were using that integer value in the graph editor. Um, then I did the body rotate X and the, the body con uh, translate Y. So to just get a little bit of a better idea of how our feet and legs are really ranging. Um, because we don't want to end up really far down the road with a range that is really not going to work. Um, we did the lifts on the, on the feet. Uh, we did spine and hips rotation. Um, now we can do the head. Now the head right now is just moving up and down because basically that head ISO channel is um, um, keeping it basically pointed forward, pointed straight forward. The rotation is being compensated for basically is the, is the gist here, okay? Looks like in this version of the file, my um, My, uh, my eye controller wasn't cycling. Okay, so let's, just, just, let's do the exact same thing. So on, he pretty much on, it's only two steps really that he's feeling it. So just one, um, 12, 24. I'm just gonna set a key. I'm gonna grab all these pre and post infinity as cycle. And then on rotate X. So 
sorry, I do need two steps. Okay, so my rotate x, just gonna be like, like this. Okay, so positive values are down on, on his head for some reason. All right. And then, you know, that looks terrible. So we're just going to retime it. There we go. Now it's overlapping a little bit. Ooh, that's, that's good. Look at that. Awesome. Now we can do the same thing with the uh, rotate Y. We kind of want Y to be um, on each front step. So let's see, let's see what this is. So positive value, oh, that's translate Y. Oh, okay, rotate Y. Um, so let's see what a positive value is. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set this one to like 10, set this one to negative 10. How come I feel like that didn't work? Oops, I set it to 109. Okay, cool. So we're gonna flat these, and now we're gonna just see what's happening. All right, so what I want is when the foot steps, that it, a little, there's a little bit of overlap in Y. So is that what's happening? Yeah, but it could be even more, and it could be stronger, so I'm just gonna scale this a little bit. Okay, that might be too much. Yeah, like that. Awesome. Now there is, if I'm not mistaken, no, that's so funny. Um, this is, all this movement in the body, just so you know, all of this movement is just um, rotation in the cog and then counter rotation in the hips and the chest control. There's no translate in the chest right now. I could further de get more detail in the range of this step and the weight by moving this up and down. But I'm not going to right now. Reason is because, again, this is a workflow. This is the step-by-step -step that you should go through in order to get to this, the, the, a result that is editable and you can turn into any creature you want or any action you want. If I wanted him to be stalking, then I would have to be doing a lot different work with this one. I would probably bring it way down, right? And then, and then fix the range of, of all my controls that way, wouldn't I, right? So this is one of those things that you're going to start touching once you have that action in mind or the specific creature in mind, right? So everything you see here is still with very few controls I'm um, still added, okay? So remember, when you delete animation on a channel, you have to reset the infinity curve types. But it's super simple to put the animation back on um, by just, because you know I have a 24 frame cycle. It's either going to happen on every 12 frames or every six frames. I'm just going to key it on 1, 6, 12, 18, 24, and then just retime it so that it looks, so that's where it's supposed to be. It's so much, because look at it. I've made this point many times. Look at from frame one to frame 24 on the, the, the Y curve. Is there any way that you would possibly get it this perfect? Where here's frame one and it's just finishing that little piece of overlap. And would you get that, that tangent looking you know, that perfect, really, could you? you know, where it's just finishing and going into a nice, you know, flat tangent on the top here? My, I have to say probably not. And look at the Rotate X, okay? Oh, actually the Rotate X was on the right uh, frame, but let me find another one. Here we go. Oops. Cool. Um, you know, this one, here's, here's frame one. It's just finishing, it's just coming up to this tangent. So how hard would it be to like, if you were keying 
in panel especially, like come up with these values and, and figure out that's exactly where it's supposed to be. It'd be very difficult, okay? Um, so then on the um, tail, I, I prefer FK tails, um, but you want to make sure that you are doing this um, really sparse and really organized. So what I like to do is to create a quick select set for the entire tail. I'm just going to call this tail and add it to shelf, okay, so that you always can key your tail. And I'm going to set a key on 1 and 24. And, but then I'm going to pose this because the straight out tail is not really what we want. I'm going to pose this so that it's kind of down and almost, kind of like a tiger in the, the way that the, the bottom is kind of strong, we'll say, but, the, but it does have a little bit of um, you know, lift and, and, and fall to it. Okay, kind of like that. Maybe a little less counterposing here. Okay, so something like that, all right? So I'm gonna set, okay? Now, we know the tail is probably never going to be um, in the middle. We, we know that the, the middle pose is gonna be filled with overlap, so it's actually better to pose, once we have this, to actually, I'm gonna pose this on 12, but it's actually better to have the tail pose on an extreme, um, either to like the left or right. Uh, I'm gonna do these controls in world. Okay. And then um, I'm gonna key the opposite. So I copied the pose that I started from to frame 12 so that I would have the same thing to start from when I did the pose on the opposite side. So as you can see, these are basically opposite poses. Okay, now I'm going to make sure that my keys are cycle. Okay, and as you can see, it's going back and forth. Now I want it to probably match a little bit more um, the foot that's forward. That didn't help. Yeah. Okay. So when he takes when he takes a step forward, it basically gets um, gets pulled over to that side. And now I'm going to offset the keys a little bit. So I just deselected the first control, and now I just deselected the second. And now the third. And now you can't you can't do this too much um, at the end. But let me just uh, let me just see what that looks like. Okay. So now we need to F offset these from the rest of them a lot. And what you'll notice is that the, oh, that's weird. I didn't put animation on the, on the tips here. It looked like the uh, tail was, um, that's so funny because what I was about to do was delete animation on this so that I would get a little bit more of, a, of an overlap effect on the tail. So that's really awesome. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to key this kind of opposite of where it is right now. It's so funny that that's the way it worked. Okay. Okay, and now we can just select these, flat them, cycle this, okay. And now we can um, basically just select all these, offset them, and watch it. Let me you can actually offset it while you're playing the animation, which is kind of cool.
There we go. See that? So it's kind of like a tiger where it, it, it's kind of stiff in the top and it moves with the body and the, the, bottom, the, the bottom of the tail has a little bit of life to it. All right. Now, you, th this is, again, this is, a, this is the workflow. So this is as much, as many keys as you'd ever want to put on like the tail because if it's stalking, then that tail is going to be really low and it's going to do just like these little like thinking like flicks. If it's running, then it's going to be almost straight out behind it and almost like overlapping like a flag. So you want to keep things really sparse. But if I select the tail, you can see, yeah, there might be a, a lot of, it might look confusing, but really it's actually not. Why? Because it's, it, what we have here is basically the, the last uh, six controls in the tail offset, right? And then the first, well, whatever these are. Let me try to select them without selecting. The first couple controls. Well, I can't select them right now without selecting, without selecting the others. Anyway, so you know that you basically kind of have like sections of your, of your tail, okay? So let me save this as, um, as 3A. Okay, now I'm gonna open up block four. And this is what I had after 45 minutes. Um, running through this workflow myself and actually just like writing down my little notes so that I would so that you guys would have something you know so they would be coherent okay so I did a little bit of, obviously I did a little bit of adjustment to the tail I made it a little bit more swingy um, it's actually a lot stiffer in the in, in the tip here actually I want to change that let me fix this A little bit of adjustment right here. Cool. And that might be a little overdone, but whatever, it's fun. Um, you'll notice that there is um, a lot more movement on here. I always find that it's better to, to to have too much and then tone it down than to not start with enough, always. Um, You'll see that the head is, it has a little bit uh, of Y rotation. It's got a little bit of overlap in X. You'll see that the spine, that both the, um, what do you want to call this? The hips and the, the sorry, the chest and the hips back here um, are counterposing, meaning they're rotating in Y right here to get a, uh, a bend in the cur uh, curve in the spine this way. And on this frame, the, the opposite, there are no keys on this shaper, but there could be. I could actually make this just slightly, slightly more attractive a curve shape, like that. Okay, that's good. Um, let's see here. Sorry about the sound, they're actually doing sound effects next door. Um, but we're almost done, so um, hopefully it won't interrupt things too much. Um, I also did a little bit of work on the toes. Not too much, but actually not those toes, where are they? Front toes, yeah. Not too much, why? Because again, you really wanna make sure that you're doing what you can to, to keep it editable and keep your walk you know, vanilla so that it can be changed into whatever you, you really want it to be. Um, so you can put character or, or like intention on, on the movement. Um, but nevertheless, uh, here we go. We have a little bit of um, movement on the, uh, on the toes, okay? Um, you'll see that the um, pole vectors on the elbows are, are nice. They're in a great spot to make it so that I can adjust, you know, if I want to bring the elbows in or out a little bit. 
um, it's very easy to. Um, that eye controller is nice and far out front, so it's not lopsided or sorry, not cross, uh, cross-eyed rather. Um, and everything can be adjusted. So uh, I said I was going to make a little bit of an adjustment on the uh, on like a major control way late on in the uh, process. That's fine. So let's say we want him just a little bit further back on his feet as he's walking. No big deal. I'm just going to grab the Translate X, which look is still just two cur uh, two uh, keyframes on a linear curve right now. So I'm just going to bring it back just a little bit. And there, now we have, you know, something that I'm happy with. Okay. Okay, cool. So um, I'm going to save this, and I'll give you this one um, one more time. We started out by finding the stride length. You have to have a stride length, and you have to know what the stride length is. It is the distance that it travels in one cycle. It's the same for all World IK controllers all four feet and the cog. If your, if your quad has two world IK controllers that are the hips and the chest and not one main one, that makes it a little bit harder, but it's not impossible. Um, all you need to do is just put the same stride length on both of them and you're 90% there. Um, make sure your elbow and knee pull vectors are out of the way and your eye controller, if it's not moving with the rig, needs to be um, animated as well. Then copy the keys to, find, to get those, that footfall pattern. So you have your stride length and you've made a, frame on, a key on frame, frame 1 and 24. Then you need to just copy from frame 1 as long as you want to hold that pose and frame 24 when you want that, the, the step to be taken. Okay? Then um, treadmill the mover. Treadmill the master controller opposite the stride length so that the character stays um, in a line. And then uh, make sure you set your key on all and, and set your pre and post infinity curve types to cycle and then cycle with offset on all of the world IK translate Z channels only. Um, and then you can start working with all the other controls on the body control rotation X and translate Y, the hips and chest, the tail, the head, all of them, you only need to know that you just need to key on frame 1 and 24 and then 6, 12, 18 and offset to save yourself hours of time. It would, this would have taken, this took me 45 minutes to get to the point that, you know, block 4 um, that I'm going to show you, that I'm going to give to you guys. It would have taken me four hours if I was doing it all in panel and trying to pose it and make it look good. You have to use offsets. Now, if you get to a, uh, in a situation where you can't use offsets, I'm not sure if offsets work with game engines. You might have to have a, a key on every frame. There's no reason that you can't bake your channels or create a buffer curve from those offset channels. Okay? And then... Uh, basically copy those curves with keyframes between frame 1 and 24. No reason at all. Super simple, right? Super simple. Um, doing the foot lifts and the, the toe splays is pretty self-explanatory. Spine and head, again, using the channels and the offsets in the grab editor. Deleting animation on a channel um, does make it so that you have to reset the post-infinity curve type and the pre-infinity curve type. Just remember that. Your tail, you probably want to pose it on the extremes and then offset instead of posing it on the middle. Um, the feet are, the, the, the head is animated kind of like in a figure eight, as is the tail. And the feet should be animated a little bit in X. Um, this version doesn't have it, but uh, maybe that's something that you can do to this version uh, when, you, when you're looking at it, and you can decide for yourself, you know, how much rotation in X there should be. Or not rotation, sorry, translation in X uh, this character should have, okay? So that is the workflow. And let's take a look at it one more time. 
And what I'm gonna do is this, I'm actually gonna to go to frame, I'm gonna start this on frame like, like 500. And you'll see that because I used all math on this, that it's still cycling perfectly even from frame 500 to frame 900. If you have even just a little bit off, even just a little bit off on your character's stride length, your feet are just gonna march off without the character. But look, we're on frame 500 and everything works perfectly. All right, and so I got to this point in 45 minutes. I mean, this lecture looks like it's only gonna be about an hour and 20 long anyway. All right, so going through, even explaining what I was doing in less than you know the time it would take you to get to your desk in the morning and then go to dailies in the afternoon, you could have a walk cycle for a character, for a quad, that um, could totally accept notes. Now remember, this is not a hundredth of what you will learn in a full creature's curriculum. I cannot stress enough how, how challenging but worthwhile the animals, animals and Creatures curriculum is at Animation Mentor. You should check it out. But if you take this workflow into the course, you will, you will excel. I really do think so. So I wanted to give this to you. Um, maybe you're out there. Uh, maybe there's some animators out there who are animating, you know, just got hired on the job and are animating quads right now and need a little bit of help. I don't know. But... Um, I wanted to give this to you and make sure that the emphasis, as always, is on workflow. All right? Okay, good. I might make a PDF of this um, little workflow um, note sheet that I, I made for myself um, so you guys can download it uh, and, and take a look at it. It would be good for you to hold on to that as well. Well, that will just about do it. This was a suggested resource. I uh, did this at the suggestion of one of the members of KennyRoy.com. Uh, you can suggest uh, lectures as well as video mail, but please do also continue to send me video mail questions. I can always use more questions. I like to have a lot to choose from, um, but also with lectures, it's kind of cool to um, be able to help out at least one anime. I know one person is going to benefit from this, so... Um, I'm really appreciative of all the support that I have on the site. I think you guys are, uh, are just really fantastic and, and you inspire me and I just want you to do so well. So um, let's just keep on working hard together and I promise I'll, I'll do my best to bring you the most valuable resources I can, okay? So that'll do it. Uh, be sure to download the Nico rig uh, before you um, open up my scene files, otherwise you won't be able to open them up. And uh, take a look at scene files and, and, and tell me what you think and post your results in the forum. All right? Show each other what you're doing. I learned from a forum. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in a while, but to all the people who haven't um, heard this, uh, I taught myself how to animate from a forum. I didn't go to school for animation. All right? But it took me like six years to, to learn. So it doesn't have to take that long if you, if you really get involved. So download this um, walk cycle or download the Nico rig and do your own and show each other. All right, that's how you're gonna learn. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for all your support and good luck with your animation. As always, rock on.